I guess these games are a good excuse to get your friends over. I'm just a cool boy. I need no sympathy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will be counting down our picks for the top 10 video games that are best played co-op. Up you go, Luck. I'm up. Thanks. For this list, we looked at games that can be played alone in single player, but we feel provide a much stronger experience when played with a buddy, or two, or three. Note that we aren't talking about the overall quality of the game on its own, but rather just how preferable it is to play these games with a friend. This can be for a variety of reasons, such as avoiding bad computer partner AI, working together to overcome difficult objectives, or simply because it's more enjoyable with someone by your side. Number 10, Star Fox Zero. All right, Peppy, good luck. After a near decade hiatus from one of Nintendo's flagship franchises, Fox and the Gang soared back into the gaming scene earlier this year to a oof, lukewarm reception. No abnormalities detected from here. While several aspects of the game were praised, much of the criticism revolved around Star Fox Zero's awkward and cumbersome control scheme. The player must multitask flying with the analog stick and aiming with the gamepad, which is much easier said than done. Use the cockpit view on the gamepad when you need precision aiming. However, the game featured a co-op mode, where players could divide the roles of flying and shooting respectively, which alleviates a lot of the stress that arises from trying to do both yourself. Now you and a pal can actually enjoy the game together, because you'll actually be able to play it without cursing obscenities at the screen. No, it's still- I'm still shooting stuff. Yes, You're watching I'm a cutscene, I'm still shooting well, stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna look at your gamepad for a second here. <laughs> Number 9, Diablo 2. It's been a while since I've seen any of your kind in the West. It would be an honor to aid you in any way that I can. Multiplayer gaming really began to evolve and take new shape with the rising surge of online communities on the PC. One of the most pivotal reasons for its expansion and success was Blizzard's Battle.net, which the company utilized for massive online play in their games like StarCraft. It will take more than just killing a few beasts in the wilderness to earn my trust. We feel the online component was best implemented, though, into Diablo 2, as its dungeon crawling style of gameplay just screamed cooperative fun. Even today, 16 years later after release, thrill seekers unite in Diablo 2 game lobbies in search of the exciting danger that awaits in those deep, dark environments. Considering that the worlds are randomly generated and can be played with up to 8 players, it's a cooperative experience that can, well, go on for years. It's good to see some strong adventurers around here. Number 8, Halo 5, Guardians. The original Halo defined the landscape of online multiplayer for consoles in the early 2000s, though we're more talking about the campaign here. Although co-op play was definitely available in previous installments, it's not quite as realized as it is in Guardians. If one were to play the campaign mode on their own, they would have to endure bafflingly stupid AI partners that get in the way far more than they can help out. It's crazy to think that what would have been an otherwise phenomenal addition to the Halo series could be ruined by poorly designed computer allies, made even worse by the removal of split-screen play. Thanks Microsoft, much appreciated. We'll get you on the sixth try. Number 7, Lovers in a Dangerous Space-Time In this breakout indie hit, the player is tasked with controlling a spaceship and all the different stations within it. It is entirely possible to play the game on your own, but think of it like this. On Star Trek, do you really think it would be easy for one person to manage the entirety of the Enterprise on their own? We don't think so, which is why this game is much better with others. It's not that it necessarily takes away any of the challenge that the game provides, but rather it actually benefits from the additional element of working together as a team. Gamers will create a bond based on trust and coordination to trudge through the perilous depths of space in one piece. Number 6, Time Crisis 3. Action. We're going to skip the formalities and just cut to the chase here. It's a light gun shooter, why would you ever play a light gun shooter by yourself? Well, the answer here is simple, dual cabinet setup. By giving each player their own screen to work with, the game places a strong emphasis on covering your ally whenever they're under fire, not to mention the weapon swap system introduced in the third game, which allows for more strategic communication. 
Furthermore, aside from just lending you a helping hand, the game is just a blast that should be shared with someone. As you shoot away the bad guys, you can both ooh and ah at the on-screen anarchy together. Number five, The Division. We don't have much intel, and we don't have the luxury of failure. Not with Manhattan under lockdown and Brooklyn on the brink. Ubisoft's huge open world shooter tasks players with moving through desolate city streets in this online only experience. With an abundance of players constantly playing online, and with the name of the game being survival, firefights breaking out around every corner is pretty much normal for this game. In such a dangerous landscape, it's a good idea to find some companions and travel together to better the chances of outlasting any ambushes that may come your way. It should also be noted that alliances aren't everlasting, as players can backstab each other just as quickly as they become partners. Much like Destiny's online world, finding players that you can cooperate and bond with is essential for success. Number 4, The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. So, before we explain anything to you, let's have a little grammar lesson. The game is called Triforce Heroes. Heroes. Plural. So, go figure, it's better with a group. For the antisocial gamers among us, Triforce Heroes doesn't force you to go multiplayer, as every level can be tackled on your lonesome. But considering how tedious it is to carry doppelgangers in single player, Nintendo clearly envisioned this one to be played with others. Nearly every puzzle and boss requires precision, great timing, and multitasking, things which would become a serious headache if you tried to do them alone. The game really does shine in multiplayer, and all things considered, why should Link have to save Hyrule alone every time, right? <laughs> Number 3, Borderlands 2. The Borderlands series, in a nutshell, is all about scavenging the wasteland for valuable loot, such as weapons, and more weapons, and some shields, and then some more weapons. For someone to play through all of this alone, it can become very repetitive very quickly as the gameplay is essentially on a rinse-repeat cycle of doing the same thing. Even die-hard Borderlands players agree that playing alone is not the way to go, and that the experience of playing with others is practically night and day. Why don't you boys run on back to your camp? I'm ready for you! Oh, good. Gathering loot and experience with teammates is a much smoother experience overall, as mission objectives can be tackled in a group, with each member using their skills for the greater goal. <laughs> Number 2, Left 4 Dead 2. Left 4 Dead is a co-op based first person shooter set in a post-apocalyptic world overrun with the undead. If such a cataclysmic event were to happen in reality, you'd really like to have trustworthy and capable people by your side to help you out, right? Well, the AI of your allies in Left 4 Dead 2 provides no such dependability, as they scamper right into danger leaving you, well, <laughs> left for dead. Somebody want it's for this reason that playing online with others is a much more pleasurable way to go through the game, as people will actually listen to the suggestions you make, cover your back in desperate situations, and make more intelligent decisions ensuring your survival in each stage. Trust us when we say, use your brains and play with others. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Goodbye, everybody. I've got to go. Number 1, Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 4 made a huge splash in the gaming world when it was released, and when a follow-up was officially revealed, the hype skyrocketed. That's why I'm your partner. Help put them at ease. Unfortunately, all expectations were crushed upon playing the game, as the horrendous AI of your partner Sheva was laughably stupid.
Her insistence on running into groups of enemies, using up precious healing items, and not following commands made her almost as brain dead as the zombies in prior games. Thankfully, the game supported co-op play in split screen or online, and we highly recommend playing Resident Evil this way as opposed to going solo. Playing with another human makes the experience much more manageable and enjoyable overall because they can actually, you know, help. Do you agree with our list? They'll order you to kill us both. What video game do you feel is best played with a buddy? For more helpful top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.